This video is about engineering economics and specifically about some examples using personal finance. I think that maybe is a way to help us relate to this content a little bit easier. And the main, the three main conversions that we'll be talking about in this video is looking at a present amount and then what can that be over the future? And then thinking about what does that look like in the future, maybe converting that future value back to the present and then a uniform amount, maybe you're contributing annually to a retirement account. Uh, the gradient is also a very common factor conversion that you'll see in engineering economics. It's not as common in personal finance situations, so I'm gonna really focus on these, these three concepts and conversions. When we're thinking about economics, this helps us characterize the process for selecting the most effective use of scarce resources. It's very helpful in comparing things. So you may have some asset or some maybe investment vehicle when we're thinking about our personal finances or maybe we're getting a loan, getting a mortgage, these types of things. How do you compare two different options? And economics, engineering economics, these factor conversions will help us do this. We're really focused on comparing alternatives and looking at the time value of money. When we're comparing these alternatives, they need to be put all in this consistent manner where all alternatives must have similar values so that we can make that appropriate comparison. The time value of money is characterized by an interest rate, which is applied to account for the opportunity cost of those funds. And really one of the main things that we're thinking about and the fundamental assumption is that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. So if you want that dollar today, and you don't have it, you've got to pay for the privilege of borrowing that money. Interest is calculated based on the compounding period. I'm going to focus on an annual compounding period, but it could also be semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, maybe it's something other than that, but those are the main uh, compounding periods we will use. The interest rate is equal to the amount of interest paid divided by the total amount owed at the beginning of the time period. And these economic conversions that we'll talk about involve calculations using an interest rate to modify one time period to another. These are the, the six economic factor conversions. There's formulas with these. I'm going to focus on the tables that we typically see for these factor conversions. These equations and the factor conversions all come from NCWES. There are many other sources from them, but they should be the same. So the first two that we see here that we have available for us are future given present. So this is our first one here, and that's the way we'd read this. We're looking for a future value given a present value. The next one is the reverse of that. It's a determining the present value given a future amount. The next two are annual and future. So this first one is finding the annual amount given some future value. The inverse of that, the reverse of that is finding the future value giving some annual contribution or amount or value. And then the last two are annual and present. So how do you find the annual amount given a present value? And then the reverse of that, how do you find the present giving an annual? So these are the future, present, and annual combinations that you can have in engineering economics. So this is the, the factor conversion table for an interest rate of 10%. Again, this came from NCWES. 10% has been roughly the long-term average return for the stock market, typically somewhere between 8 and 12%, depending on how you define it and what you're specifically looking for. N is the time period, so the number of years is what we're going to focus on here. So we can look at anything from one year up to 50 years. And as far as this table goes, there are many more combinations that you can look at. And essentially, these are multiplicative fa factors that help us do these conversions. For instance, how do you convert? How do you find a present value given that future value? Well, this, these are the values you're going to multiply by given that time period that you're interested in. So let's look at a couple examples. Again, these are focused on personal finance. So we're going to see how will this relate to our personal finances, mostly thinking about kind of in the retirement context. So how much money would you have at the end of 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 years if you saved $10,000 this year and earned an interest rate of 10%? So that's saying we're, we have a one-time amount. We're going to put an amount 
today, a $10,000 in an investment vehicle that's going to earn a steady 10%. We know it's not steady over time in investments. It may be higher or lower. You may lose some years. You may gain a lot some years. But over time, that 10% has been roughly the amount. So we're going to use the conversion. We're looking for a future amount given a present value. So our present value is 10,000. And we're seeing what will it be in the future for 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 years. So we're going to use these five values. And here's our table that we put together to show these calculations. So here's the number of years that we're looking for. Here's our calculation that we're doing. So we're just taking the values from the table, bringing them here, and then multiply by the amount that we said we're going to save this year. So it's a one-time amount. So after 10 years at 10% interest, that $10,000 grows to almost $26,000. At 20 years, $67,000. 30 years, $174,000. 40 years, $152,000 and over 1.1 million after 50 years. So that same $10,000, you haven't put anything else into it, and this is compound interest. So you're not only getting that 10% on the original 10,000, it's that 10% at the end of each year that you're gaining on that total amount. And so if we think about it, that, that first 10 years, we only have $25,937. 10-year period, we put in $10,000, we're earning 10% a year, we end up with 26, almost $26,000 at the end of that 10-year period. Now, take a look at this last 10-year period. So going from 40, year 40 to year 50, we're going from 450,000 to over 1.1 million. This is a huge gain that we're, we're seeing, and it's that value, the benefit of that compound interest. The longer we have, the more money we're going to make. That interest compounds and builds on itself. So that those early dollars are very important. And the earlier you start, the more important that is. If you're 20 years old, 50 years may sound like a long time, and that is a long time. But hopefully you'll live to be 70. Odds are you'll live to be 70. So that $10,000 you put in this year into an investment vehicle that can hopefully earn 10%, that's going to need to be invested in a... Uh, a broad mix of, of stocks likely to earn that, that amount of interest over that 50 year time period. So when you're 70, that $10,000 could be worth 1.1 million. Obviously there's no guarantee on any, any types of investments, but this is what we could be planning for and saving for. So now I'm going to ask another question. How much would a 55 year old have to save to retire at 75 years old? with the same amount as a 25 year old who saved $10,000. So we've got kind of this, this scenario we're working from. We're gonna have the same uh, values here. To, we're looking for a future amount given present. And so our first one's easy. We already have this one. So after 50 years going from 25 up to 75, our conversion factor is 117.3909. We're multiplying by that present amount that we're putting in $10,000. And we're going to have that $1.173 million amount after 50 years. So the, the part of this question is that 55-year-old, now let's say, you know, life happened. I didn't say for retirement. I'm 55. How much do I have to put in compared to if I had done that at 25 to equal that $1.17 million at age 75? So at this point, we only have 20 years to work with. So we're going from 55 to 75. So we only have a 20-year period to have that compound interest do its work. The factor conversion there is 6.7275. And we're looking for this value here that we need to put in at 55 years old to equal the 1.173 million that we would be searching for if we did this at 25. Solving that, we're just dividing the total amount, that final amount that we're looking for by our factor conversion. And we'd need to save almost 175, we need to put in $175,000 at age 55 to get to that 1.1 million. So we're looking at a comparison standpoint, $10,000 is what you need at 25 years old, 175,000 is what you would need 
at 55 years old to end up with the same amount at 75 years old. Another question, what if we're saying, look, I'm going to put in $10,000 every year. I'm going to make that a priority. My salary, I'm going to pay myself first. I'm going to get this money in and get it working for me so that I have that compound interest really building over time. So now what we're looking for, we're looking for a different factor conversion. Now we're looking for future given annual. So we want to find a future amount given annual. Our annual is the $10,000 we're going to put in every year. And we have different factor conversions now to make these calculations work. We do want to look at 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 years saving 10,000 each year over that time period. So in our, at year 10, we've put $10,000 in each year. So our, our principal is at 100K. We've put in 10,000 a year over 10 years, 100K. That grows to 159,000. So making some progress, but it, it's not looking tremendous. The compound interest is where we really get ahead. So at 20 years, we've now put in 200K, right? We put in 10,000 a year, each of those 20 years. At the end of those 20 years, it's now gonna be worth over half a million. Now we're at 300K after 30 years. And so this could be, this could be your retirement savings if you, if you have a job, you're working at 30 years, every year you put $10,000 in this investment vehicle, it could be worth $1.6 million. Let's say you, you work a little bit longer, you start working at 23 and you say, I'm going to work till 63. Well, you've put in 10,000 a year, so you've put in 400K and now you're at 4.4 million. Let's say you keep pushing it, you love what you do, that's your passion, that's your purpose, you keep putting in that 10,000 per year starting at 23, you're working till 73, you've put in $500,000 over that 50 year time period, but it's worth 11.6 million. We see those increments growing each of those 10 year periods, a lot more growth because of that beauty of that compounding interest over time. Some people call it the eighth wonder of the world. It's extremely important and it's a way to build value and wealth over time. To illustrate this a little more clearly, I'm taking these same values and let's look at the, those 10 year delta. So just the difference, how much you earn in each 10 year time period relative to the previous time, 10 year time period. Again, we're still putting in that 10,000 per year. That first year we made that 159. So we put in hundred K we're at 160,000. The next increment bigger 400,000, then over a million, then almost 3 million, then over 7 million. This is that beauty, and that's why you want to save as early as possible, as much as possible. Give yourself that time to build that compound interest, get that value, save this money, and build that wealth long term.